We're going to take a look at like the, the covenant options really, really quickly for Windwalker and what are, are some of my thoughts on them. So the Kyrian, Kyrian really interests me because I think the the signature ability is actually really strong. So basically you have a five minute cooldown health pot that removes curses, diseases, and bleeds. Personally, I, I feel like this is really strong for Arena. So this, this alone makes me really interested in playing Kyrian on both my mage and my monk. But it's a really hard decision because there's so many good abilities from your covenants that uh, it really is hard to say. But yeah, so our class ability for the Kyrian is Weapons of Order. It's a two minute cooldown. I'll just read it out. For the next 30 seconds, your mastery is increased by 13%, so you get a boost in damage. Additionally, Rising Sun Kick cooldown is reset instantly, and your Rising Sun Kick reduces the cost of your Chi abilities by one for five seconds. So this is gonna be a really good burst cooldown. Two minutes, uh, you basically get an increase in mastery, which gives you big damage, and also resets Rising Sun Kick. So you're gonna be able to basically Rising Sun Kick, Weapons of Order, and then you can do it again. And I think it's gonna be a, a lot of damage. Basically all of the, it seems like all, all of the class abilities for all the covenants are like a big burst cooldown. So weapons of order gonna be really, really strong. And then the potion, uh, it makes this one like a serious contender for me. The night phase sounds interesting as well. The signature ability is soul shape. You turn into a Vulpin, you get a little teleport and increases your movement speed. So gives you a little bit more mobility. I'm a little bit hesitant for this one because I feel like Number one, you don't really need more mobility on a monk. You already have an insane amount of mobility. So this one for me isn't a super big contender. And Phalanx Stomp is also, the one thing I do like about Phalanx Stomp is it's such a short cooldown. So I think it's the most consistent. Uh, you strike the ground fiercely to expose a Phalanx. So basically what this does is you attack, you, you use it and a, a tree kind of opens up on the ground. And while you're standing in that tree thing, uh, you deal uh, nature damage um, and you rip chi and energy spheres out of enemies. So maybe that gives you additional chi, additional energy, and your abilities have a 6% chance of resetting the cooldown on Feyline Stomp while fighting on a Feyline. So you might be able to just keep this going for a really long time. This apparently has a really, really cool animation. Uh, I could see it being really strong in like Mythic Plus. Uh, I could see it being really, really strong in raids, but the one thing I don't think it's going to be strong in is PvP. I could be wrong about that, but I think just the positional requirement, it's like Rune of Power for uh, a Windwalker Monk. So I think Night Fae for me is off the table, but um, definitely an option. We'll go to the next one. Uh, we got Venthyr. Venthyr was, you know, the one everyone wanted to go for because you basically have like a teleport. Door of Shadow. Um, you have a one minute cooldown, basically targeted, casted, teleport, um, really, really strong, additional mobility. Uh, I think there's going to be a huge outplay potential with Door of Shadow. So that in and of itself makes it really, really interesting. And it just so happens that for Windwalker Monk, Fallen Order is super broken. Um, the, since I've been playing it, it's a three minute cooldown and you summon a ton of images. It basically turns Windwalker Monks into like a zoo class. So you summon, you know, a fallen ox, uh, crane, and tiger adept for four seconds, and they just keep spawning. Some heal you, some do damage. And, uh, yeah, this is the, I, in my opinion, this is the most powerful burst cooldown right now. It's, uh, it's weird, but I, I, I would almost anticipate that this one gets nerfed. And, yeah, it, it's, I don't know how I feel about it, because it is so strong, but... It's not that fun to play with, you know what I mean? You just, it's not like something that really adds like an interesting element to your rotation, but it does just do a lot of damage. It's like summoning Zwen, you know what I mean? And just having extra pets come in and help you fight. So this is an option, um, and Dwarf Shadows is really, really uh, strong, obviously. But the three minute cooldown makes it a bit questionable, but I, I would say in like, if you're like dueling or in 2v2 or something like that, and it's a fast game, that one is gonna be insanely strong. <laughs> Uh, and then last but not least, we have the Necrolords. Fleshcraft, uh, a channeled shield um, on a two minute cooldown. So this is pretty strong. Uh, and there is like some of, I forget what they're called, but like some of the talents you can put into your covenants, you can make yourself immune to crowd control with this. So Fleshcraft is really, really good defensively. And yeah, you can avoid uh, like stuff like sap in arena. I don't know if that's gonna be subject to change, but um, Fleshcraft is definitely super duper strong. And then this one is actually probably the most fun one, I think. Bone Dust Brew. So basically you, as a Windwalker Monk, you hurl a keg on the ground. It has a one minute cooldown. 
and for 10 seconds, anyone hit by that keg uh, basically has a chance to get multi-strike. So your abilities have a 35% chance to affect the target a second time at 35% effectiveness. And this is basically just similar to multi-strike we had in uh, Warlords of Draenor. Yeah, and also I guess it increases healing too if you're a Mystery of a Monk, so that's pretty interesting. Spinning Crane Kick refunds one chi when uh, striking enemies with a Bone Dust Brew active. So to me, <clears throat> the most fun one is probably this, but I don't know if that's going to be the one that I go with, to be honest. So that's kind of like a, a quick little overview of the Covenants. I'm still on the fence, but I would say the number one contender for me right now is Kieran. I think Kieran is going to be really, really nice. And then also Necro Lords, but all of them are definitely really, really solid. And it really depends on what you want to do, because I think some are stronger for PvP and some are stronger for uh, PvE. We're going to take a look uh, really, really quickly at some of the legendary effects for uh, Windwalker monks uh, or monks in general. So when you when you go and craft your legendary, there's a, there's a bunch of different options. Uh, some of these are more generic. Uh, we're not even going to go over those right now. Um, it's very unlikely that I would ever pick any of them, um, but we're just going to go after, we're going to take a look at the monk-specific ones, because I think those are obviously the most interesting and uh, important for monks. So, um, we can take a look at them. We'll start over here. Last Emperor's Capacitor. Uh, chi Spenders increase the damage of your next Crackling Jade Lightning by 100% and reduce its cost by 5%, stacking up to 20 times. So you can get your... Um, if we do some quick math, 2,000% uh, increased damage on Crackling Jade Lightning. And uh, yeah, it, this is something we had in Legion. I think it was a Legion uh, Legendary, uh, which was kind of fun to play with. After playing with it myself in PvP, I don't think it's going to be super great. Like if someone knows that you're running this and you use Crackling Jade Lightning, you're just going to get stopped and then not be able to do anything with it. So uh, this is something I probably won't play with very much. I, I have experimented with it. Jade Ignition. Uh, whenever you deal damage to a target with Fist of Fury, you gain a stack of Chi Energy up to a uh, maximum of 30 stacks. Uh, 30 stacks. Uh, using Spinning Crane Kick will cause the energy to detonate in a Chi Explosion, dealing damage to all enemies. Uh, the damage is increased by 5%. So this, uh, probably going to be really good in Mythic Plus, um, but I don't think this is what I'm going to go for for PvP. Um, but I will show you... Let's, you know, we're going to skip this one really, really quick. We'll go over here. This one actually is really cool. The one thing I like about Monk is it feels like so many of their abilities and like Covenants and Legendaries synergize really well. I think there's actually going to be a ton of potential for um, like some really, really cool, interesting combos. So Zwen's Treasure. When Fist of Fury ends, the critical strike chance of Rising Sun Kick is increased by 30% for 5 seconds. Rising Sun Kick critical strike uh, reduces the cooldown of Fist of Fury by 1.5 seconds. So there's some synergy there when you Fist of Fury. It increases the crit chance of your critical strike. When you get that crit, it reduces the cooldown of your Fist of Fury. So I think that one's going to be pretty fun. And then we have Touch of Death. Reduces the cooldown of your Touch of Death by 60 seconds. This will basically be useless in PvP. Uh, maybe it'll be good in like random BGs and world PvP if you want to just run around and touch of death a whole bunch of people. I think there's big potential here for like Mythic Plus and maybe raiding, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, in, in like Arena, I don't see this ever being used. Uh, Swiftsure sure Wraps, so this is a additional mobility. So instead of having two charges of roll, you now have three charges of roll. So when you're running around and chasing, you know, mages, uh, as if you didn't have enough mobility, now you're going to be able to sit on them even more. So that's great. You're going to have three rolls, you're going to have Flying Serpent Kick, you're going to have Transcendence, you're going to have Tiger's Lust. Lots of mobility. Um, Invoker's Delight. You gain 12% haste for 15 seconds after summoning your Celestial. Kind of, I, I don't know. This seems really boring. I, I don't, I would never look at these legendaries and pick this one. And I really hope this one just ends up sucking. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here, let me, let me go over my favorites now. Last, but certainly not least. Actually, second last, but certainly not least. This one, uh, I think this is new. I've never seen this before. Uh, escape, escape from reality. This one's broken. After you use your Transcendence Transfer, you can use Transcendence Transfer again within 10 seconds, ignoring its cooldown. <laughs> During this time, the healing done to you by your Vivify is increased by 50%, and you'll be refunded for 50% of the cost when it's cast on you. So, yeah. Imagine you're, uh, you have your portal behind the pillar in the Grand Arena, and you're fighting in the middle, and you're in trouble. You port behind the pillar, 
you heal yourself up with 50% increased vivify and then they chase you and you just portal again to the middle of the map and then you roll to the other side of the arena. It's going to be really strong. It's going to be actually insane. So uh, yeah, Escape from Reality is going to have huge, you know, kind of outplay potential, I guess, uh, in terms of mobility, I would say for Windwalkers. And if this is for Mistweavers as well, that's going to be actually ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, super strong. And then this one is the one I played with the most. Uh, it's called Kiefer's Sky Screech. Tiger Palm now is a 10 yard range. So you have like a 10 yard range dash and increases your critical strike chance uh, by 25% uh, for six seconds on the target. When used, you instantly dash to the target. So you have a gap closer that you can just spam, a 10 yard gap closer you can just spam that increases the crit chance on that target by 25%. So you can, I think with this one, you're gonna be able to swap around a lot in arena. Um, basically dash to random people. It's like Alpha Tiger in a way. And I think this actually will synergize really, really well with Alpha Tiger. You go to a target, you dash to them, you get Bloodlust and 25% increased chance to crit. And yeah, seems really strong. Seems actually insane. So this is the one I'm probably going to be playing the most, uh, especially if I end up going with an Alpha Tiger as one of my PvP talents. Uh, but those are the eight kind of monk um, legendaries. Uh, there's some generic ones as well, but um, like I said, these are not, to me, they're not that interesting, and I probably won't end up playing with any of them. So, yeah, out of all of these, I think the most exciting ones are Escape from Reality uh, and Kiefer Sky Screech. Um, I think they're going to be really strong. So what we're going to do now is take a look at some of these conduits, and I'm going to go through uh, putting in, oh, I think they're called Soul Binds. So I have the conduits, uh, Soul Binds, and uh, I, I ended up going with the angels, Kyrian, I think they're called. And uh, this is Pelagos. So I'll show you kind of how it works and uh, what some of these different conduits do. So basically when you go through these uh, talent trees, you can pick certain routes and those routes will give you more uh, endurance conduits or more potency conduits or more finesse conduits. So endurance is like defense, finesse is like mobility kind of, and potency is more damage. So you can kind of pick your path and pick the traits that you want. It's kind of like a talent tree. It's it's pretty interesting, I think. Now once you get them all uh, unlocked, and what I'm hoping is that there's not just one that's the best. I want them all to be good, so that way there actually is an, an interesting decision. But we'll go through some of these conduits. Um, the potency, strike and clarity, weapons of order duration is increased, and the mastery bonus is increased. So strike of clarity basically buffs uh, weapons of order, which is the uh, covenant ability that I got. Zwen's bonds, abilities that activate combo strikes reduce the cooldown of invoke Zwen. Uh, so that's that's interesting. You basically you buff your Zwen and you make it up more frequently. Uh, coordinated offensive when storm earth and fire spirits fixate, uh, they deal 10% additional damage. So your single target damage of storm earth and fire is going to be uh, buffed by quite a bit um, with this offensive conduit. Um, calculated strikes, spinning crane kick, uh, bonus from striking a unique target from tiger palm, black oak kick, and rising sun kick is increased by an additional 10%. Okie dokie. And Fist of Fury damage is increased by 20%. So looking at all of these, the one that strikes uh, or it sticks out the most is probably uh, Inner Fury or Coordinated Offensive. So more st Storm Earth and Fire damage. Uh, and then of course more Fist of Fury damage. And I assume that this Coordinated Offensive is also going to buff Serenity if you're specced into it. Otherwise it'll be really, really bad if you plan on playing Serenity. Uh, for endurance, uh, we have uh, harm's denial, expel harm increased, uh, expel harm's healing is increased by 20%. Fortifying ingredients, fortifying brew grants you a shield uh, to 5% of your health for 15 seconds. Uh, when casting vivify on yourself, its heal is increased by 10% and has a chance to refund its cost, so a little bit more self healing. Uh, and then we'll go into the finesse ones. Targets affected by your leg sweep deal 5% less damage. And I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure eventually you're going to be able to stack these. So you're going to be able to like level these up and stack them. So this, for example, instead of it being 5% less damage, you can stack them up and maybe it'll be like 20% less damage. I'm not sure on the exact numbers, but when you're looking at these, you have to keep in mind that its effectiveness is going to go up throughout the expansion. So yeah. Tumbling technique, blackout kick has a 5% chance to grant a charge of a roll. So you know if that goes up to 10%, all of a sudden, uh, you have a way higher chance to be getting additional rolls, which I think is pretty interesting. Honestly, looking at everything for Monk so far, the mobility is the big one for me. I feel like our mobility is just insane. 
Transcendence uh, gives you movement speed. So after you portal, you can kind of kite around the map a little bit easier. Uh, this one is interesting to me, Limber uh, Lingering Numbness. So when you pa paralyze someone, they get snared by 60% for five seconds. Imagine that goes up to like 80%. And you, you go and you paralyze a healer, and then you make a, you, you know, you, you hit someone, and that healer gets snared by 80% after. They're basically rooted. I think that's going to be really, really strong. So uh, we can kind of pick, we'll, we'll go through basically cosplay putting uh, these in. And I've seen these before, so I'll show you. Uh, but these are really strong. So like these soul binds really increase all your covenant things. Uh, using a spell or ability increases your versatility by 1% for 10 seconds. Using another spell or ability increases the amount by 1% uh, when it's not a repeat of the previous spell or ability uh, stacking five times. So you know, obviously going to pick that one. And you have to keep in mind uh, with each covenant, you're going to have multiple soul binds and they all have unique abilities. So definitely something to consider when picking your covenants but yeah there's some there's a really good options out there so i think what i'm going to do is go with file of patience so what this does is it increases my healing on my little potion thing uh, by 35 percent but it, it's done over 10 seconds so it makes it a really really strong heal but it's over time instead which i still think uh is really really sick so we're gonna pick that and that means i get to put in a finesse conduit and we're gonna pick the paralyzed snare and I put it in, then I pick this one. Now I get an Endurance Conduit, and I'm going to put in Expel Harm Healing. The Instant Healing, I think, is going to be good. And then I, Defeating an Opponent reduces the cooldown of your file. Um, you have a chance to obtain Cleanse Cloth and Enchanting Material. So both of these are just PvE ones. I don't really care. You can just pick whatever quality of life one you like. And then I get to put in a Potency Conduit again, and I'm going to go with... Inner Fury, Fist of Fury damage. So Fist of Fury damage, and then I get to choose, do I want Finesse or Potency? We're going Big Dam always. And we're gonna go with uh, Coordinated Offensive. Some more damage on my Storm Earth and Fire. And then last but not least, we'll get this last one, Combat Meditation. Weapons of Order increases your mastery by 5% for 20 seconds and occasionally expels Sorrowful Memories. Walking through the memories increase, uh, so you get more mastery. It's actually really cool. Like a little or orb spawns, and this is basically like the talent tree. This is activated now, and uh, I get, you know, these finesse. This is actually, I, I actually like this. I, I really think with these conduits and stuff like that, it's going to give you some nice customization. The only thing that's going to be scary is, like, to me, the only thing that's really scary about this is if there's, like, ones that are kind of cookie cutter in PvP and ones that are cookie cutter in PvE and they're completely different and you're not going to be able to swap them. That's the one thing that scares me, but other than that, uh, I, I really do like them. How they get swapped around is uh, going to be a different story and is, is subject to change, but being able to like choose the different soul binds and like the, the conduits and stuff like that, I actually I think it's really cool, sword, personally. So, yeah, these, these, are, these are fun, and uh, yeah. That's uh, basically the soul binds and uh, conduits. This is just like the bare bones changes that they added to Monk. When you log in, these are the things you're gonna notice like when pre-patch hits and as you level up, so when you get max level. So looking at the talent trees in your ability book, there's just a few things that happened. So your talent trees, there's no changes at all except one. And what they did was they made Zwen, Fury of Zwen, baseline. So we got a new baseline ability, uh, invoke Zwen uh, the White Tiger, and it is no longer a talent. So uh, in its place came Dance of Chi Ji, which was one of the Azerite traits that I personally liked playing with as a monk. So basically it's a proc that makes it so your spinning crane kick is free and does initial damage. So I'll probably end up playing this a lot unless it's just undertuned, and then maybe I'll play hit combo instead. But for now, Dance of Chi Ji actually does insane damage, so I'll definitely be using it. Um, and then, of course, we have Invoke Zwen. Now, they actually changed something about in Invoke Zwen, which I want to talk about. And I just found it out today playing the beta. It's, it's not in the tooltip yet, but they added something called Empowered Tiger Lightning. And I think what this was supposed to do is kind of mirror the old Touch of Death. So in Battle for Azeroth, what would happen is you'd put up Touch of Death and you were incentivized to burst during your Touch of Death as hard as you could to get out more damage uh, for it. Now, it's the same thing for Zwen with this Empowered Tiger Lightning. Uh, Zwen strikes your enemies with Empowered Tiger Lightning every four seconds, dealing 10% of the damage you have dealt to those targets uh, in the last four seconds. So you're basically going to summon Zwen, you're going to burst as hard as you can, and then the more damage you put in, the more damage you're going to get out of Zwen, which I think is like kind of a cool mechanic that they added. 
um, and should be really, really fun in both PvP, PvE, everything. Uh, so I, I really, really like that. So that is one thing that they changed um, and added with Invokes When being baseline. Uh, the next thing you're going to notice if you look at your PvP talents is uh, we lost Reverse Harm. Oh, actually, we didn't lose Reverse Harm. Okay, so first of all, let me explain. They added Expel Harm baseline. So in BFA, we had Reverse Harm as a PvP talent. It did 8% uh, 8 of your um, health and healing as well as damage that got healed back. Um, and then it also gave you 2 Chi. So that was awesome because it's something we had in earlier expansions as a monk. Uh, and they they kind of added it back with Expel Harm. So now we have a new baseline ability called Expel Harm. It's not a talent anymore. Uh, it costs 15 energy, 15 second cooldown. Uh, expel negative chi from your body, healing uh, and dealing 10% of the amount healed as nature damage to enemies. So you have an instant. It also generates one chi. So you have an instant chi generator outside of PvP. So even if you're not a PvP player, this affects you. It's going to be really nice. Expel Harm is an awesome ability. Uh, it gives you a global to press when you're not actually on your target, having a little bit of instant healing, instant damage. Uh, it's really nice. So what they did is they changed the Honor Talent to increase the healing done by Expel Harm by 100%, and your Expel Harm now generates 2 Chi. Now that stacks with the 1 Chi. So now Expel Harm is, the Reverse Harm is just a buffed Expel Harm, and it's really good because it generates 3 Chi. Now I don't know if that's a bug or what, but it's ludicrous that it uh, generates 3 Chi. So yeah, that's going to be really, really strong. And that's the only change in the Honor Talents. So that's the only change in the Honor Talents, uh, except that we lost Fortifying Brew. So there's no Fortifying Brew as an Honor Talent, and in fact, Monks just have it baseline. So they nerfed it a little bit. So it's a two-minute cooldown. It uh, gives you 15% damage reduction and 15% increased health. So it's slightly nerfed from the 2020 it was before, and now it's 15-15, but a baseline ability. So uh, personally, I think that that's a great change. Um, making it baseline uh, as a defensive cooldown is really, really nice. And it was really, really strong. So I think, you know, making it... I'm, I'm honestly, I'm kind of in favor in general of making cooldowns a little bit weaker and making them uh, up more frequently. So I think that's kind of in line with what I like. It's not like a, an Omega wall, but using it well is definitely going to be really impactful. So the last, but certainly not least, uh, they changed Touch of Death. It's back to kind of like the original Touch of Death. So you exploit the enemy's target weakness, instantly killing creatures if they have less health than you. It's really insane for leveling. It's going to be good for raids. It's going to be good in PvP. It also deals damage equal to 35% of your maximum health against players and stronger creatures under 15% health. So it does a shoot ton of damage. It's not necessarily an instant kill, so it doesn't instantly kill them anymore. Uh, they changed it. So it deals damage equal to 35% of your maximum health against players. So if they're under 15%, then uh, you can press Touch of Death. And more often than not, it will just kill them instantly. But if they have a ton of damage reduction, it won't just like one shot through the shield wall and pain suppression, I think. Um, and that's on a three minute cooldown. So uh, we don't have like that bursty touch of death, uh, but instead they gave us the invoke Zwen burst. So that's kind of like the baseline uh, monk kit change. Um, and I, I like it. They gave us some new abilities. We got Zwen baseline. We got Fortifying Brew baseline. Uh, I'm... I'm I'm a fan of the Touch of Death change. I'm a, I'm a fan of like the Fury of Zwen change. And I think uh, with these changes, with the, like the Covenants, um, the Legendaries, as well as the Conduits, uh, I think Monks are shaping up to be pretty cool as well. Uh, they're apparently making even more changes to Monks. Um, and I'll definitely keep you guys updated and give you my thoughts on those as they come. That should be coming sometime this week.